course, is one of my favorite exhibits. The exhibit shows the similarities primates have and also the differences. You can see a large 300-pound gorilla. And then on the other side, you see this tiny little pygmy marmoset. Oh, baby. Look. The pygmy marmoset is the smallest New World monkey. They are about 100 grams. You can fit in the palm of your hand. They're from South America. And we have a breeding pair of pygmy marmosets here. Her female, for her size, she's really filling out, so we're, we're pretty sure she's pregnant. She's been pretty consistent around 234. Our female is Moose. She is three years old. We want to gauge how much weight she's gaining, losing, make sure she's staying at a healthy weight. So they're moving around a lot, so I think the best way for us to get a good idea is if you go in and do a training set. So big. This is their pygmy dinner, it's like the tree sap that they love. It's pretty much the same thing as a, a maple syrup. Hello. Come on. Hey, where is everybody? Gordon. Girl. A good weight for them is about 140 grams. She's on the heavier side. She's about 250 grams. We do want to keep an eye to make sure she's not gaining too much or losing too much. OK, your turn. Come on. With these little guys, they are all over you. They're curious. They're so small. And they're just amazing animals. I'm excited to see maybe like two more babies and pygmies jumping all over the place. I think it's going to be very adorable. The red rough lemur is only found in forests on the northeast coast of Madagascar. They are critically endangered. Hi. That's their alarm call. It could be somebody slamming a door. Sometimes they go off when our telephone rings. They have about 12 different vocalizations. Everyone comes in here and they, they get so scared. They like can't believe that that sound's coming from the lemurs. The red rough lemurs that we have here at the Bronx Zoo educate people to conservation efforts to save lemurs in the wild. So it's really great that the dominant red rough female that we have in our group, Mina, just had two infants. Unlike a lot of other lemur species, red rough moms leave their babies in a nest, and the babies stay in the nest until they reach various developmental milestones. Here in the zoo setting, we manage them, and the keepers pay careful attention to the development of the baby lemurs. <laughs> been hand feeding Mina. It allows me to get a better look on her and the kids up close. You're gonna hang upside down. Red ruffs eat mostly fruit and nectar and flowers. Mina gets anything she wants because she is being such a great mom. Do you wanna help yourself? The kids are really active. They are climbing in and out of that box, onto the perch. They're going everywhere. This is the first time I'm seeing them show any interest in Mina's food. She'll still need to nurse them, but it's good that they're showing some interest. Hi. We'll make sure they are growing well and developing properly. They have to be a little bit more mobile before they can make it out on exhibit. Oh. Squirrel monkeys are from tropical South America. They live in the tropical rainforest, and it's nice and warm. But in New York City, it starts to get cold. With that, the squirrel monkeys will be moved into winter holding. They'll go into a building where they don't have to deal with snow and the cold weather. The keepers will work a couple days a week throughout the season to work on crate training the squirrel monkeys so that at the end of the season, the animals are comfortable going into the crate. Stanley! 
You go inside, Stanley? Stanley! Go ahead in. Good job. We continue the credit training process each year inside. just to maintain the behavior, but for the youngsters, this is a whole new process. Go ahead, you could do it. Go ahead. We have six goal monkeys out on the island. We have Pisco, who is our breeding male, and then Stanley and Abby, who are breeding females. Currently, Stanley is pregnant, and Abby just had a baby. Now that Abby's baby has been born, she's going to become a little bit more cautious and more protective. It's just a little bit more work in getting her to go into a crate. Abby! Good, good job. Almost everybody will at least come up to the crate and go in it at least a little bit. Some of them will cheat and they'll hold it with their back feet or they'll leave their tail out and yeah. cheat. Good girl, Jackson. Good, good. That was good. Yeah, he went really far in. I think the monkeys are ready to be successfully moved into their winter holding. We've been training them for a while. They all know what we want them to do. Good job. I think it's going to go really well. Hey! I saw you coming. Come over. That's my boy. Good job. So that's Milton. He's our male white cheek gibbon. And his girlfriend, Chi Yu, is over that way. I see you, crazy girl. Come here. Gibbons are like a hidden secret of Jungle World. Not everybody knows they're here. When you do finally get to see the gibbons, it's pretty amazing watching them just swing from tree to tree. It's beautiful. Good girl. Gibbons are found in Southeast Asia. Good. And they are endangered, mostly due to habitat loss and hunting. Chiyu, come on. I can't scratch your back from here. Does she want to back? Yeah. I can't do it from here, my love. The misconception about gibbons is that they're monkeys. They are not monkeys. They're lesser apes. They don't have tails. They're not monkeys and they take offense to that. <laughs> oh, I see them coming across the hill. And of course, Gore is leading the group. Gore, he definitely is the one that's watching everything all the time. He seems like he's kind of patrolling. Geladas are very temperamental. If they notice any little change, they will be patrolling for a little while. It just might be someone that looks out of place. <laughs> someone might have um, a large hat on. <laughs> it could be anything that is slightly distracting. Gore is the dominant male of our large family group. Last year, Gore had some health issues. A cardiac device had been implanted so that we could monitor any possible heart issues. We were concerned a little bit because this could affect breeding. Perfect. But lately, he was breeding successfully. He has sired a brand new baby. And there you can see a little baby Eshi riding on the back. I will never lose that amazement in watching how quickly primate babies develop. Eshi has just been a model student. She's just ahead of the curve in every way. I think that speaks a lot to Gemma's mothering. Gemma is our dominant female. This is not her first baby. She's had a few, and I think she's just a pro. And baby geladas don't so much walk as they hop and flop. Sometimes walk in and they'll be doing headstands. They love somersaults. <laughs> Very energetic. <laughs> we have a whole new generation of geladas growing up here at the Bronx Zoo right now. The fact that we have geladas at every age level for people to see, I, I feel, is very important. Hi, sweetheart. What are you doing? Here he is. Hello. I'm going to give him this romaine. Is he special? All right. Ready, Aaron? Uh oh. He's like, oh, I got to walk three feet. Sorry. Ernie is our 34-year-old silverback. Ern, ready? Look at that catch. 
Gorillas can live to their 50s, so Ernie still has some good years on him. He serves as the protector and the leader of our troop of 11 gorillas. Everyone here? Whoop! Oh, kind of. He has a number of different names. Uh, we call him E-Man, you know, Big Man. I call him, you know, different things, because he's, he's massive. He's at least 450 pounds. He's a, he's a big boy. All right, Ernie. <laughs> it's very gentle. He does a really good job at as silverback for his troop. When he has to move fast to break a fight or something, he will. He will move fast, so. And all the ladies in his troop, they all love him. What are you doing? So up top is Kamara. That's one of Ernie's two-year-old daughters. She's tough. Chest beat, that's like a little display movement. She sees us all up here, and she doesn't know who you all are, so she's like, hey, you down there, you know, step off. Ernie's thinking about not going up there. <laughs> He's like, hey, come on, kid. Yeah, he's looking up. He's like, what he's are you like, doing? He's like, what are you doing? There? Hey, boys. Gorillas are one of our closest relatives. Are you handsome? You doing all right? They are also only threatened by humans. They have no other predators. Gorillas are endangered due to wildlife trafficking, habitat loss, and disease that come from humans. Ernie is one of our silverback gorillas here, and then we also have Natondo, who's in charge of his troop of four adult females. Come on, guys. Suki's ready. Come on, Ernie. Oh, little Ernie. Come on, Ernie. There he is. Good job. We notice a slight change in Ernie, where he doesn't want to shift as quickly as normal. Come on, Ernie. He's drooling a little bit when eating, and he's just hiding his bottom left canine from us when we try to get a look at it. Ern, come here. Is your name Ernie? Open up for me. Open up. So it's his bottom side. The keepers noticed a broken off canine. On the, on the lower side. Good boy. The break's pretty severe, and we will have to take care of it right away. Earn. If it's left unchecked, it could lead to infection in the bone and can cause really bad problems for him. If you ever wondered what a 500-pound gorilla, how much antibiotics they have to take, so he's got 13 pills. So knowing that we have to immobilize him to do the dental work, having a large animal like that under anesthesia, it's very concerning. Well, it's peanut butter. The troop is so well bonded with one another. Separating one individual from the troop is very difficult and stressful. He doesn't want to be separated from his family group, and they don't want him to be separated. So it's really important that we keep him as healthy as possible.